In this first practical video I would like to show you how you can calibrate simply C14 dates that you have in your uh, project and how to come up with calibrated dates and some nice plots. And we will use Oxcal for that, which is, uh, as I have told you, the quasi-standard at the moment for C14 calibration, although there are promising other software solutions out there, but this is the one that most people use currently. So whenever you see a C14 date calibrated, you probably will see plots that come from Oxcal. Maybe they are changed a bit, but uh, there is a significant amount of plots that look very similar, and most of them are produced by Oxcal. You can get Oxcal on the page of the Oxford uh, radiocarbon accelerator unit. Um, you will find this in on the web at c14.arc.ox.ac.uk uh, but you can also use Oxcal in the search engine of your choice and you probably will find this page or the specific page for Oxcal that is associated with this unit here. So here you can find the link for Oxcal and if you click on that you get to the specific Oxcal page also up here there is a link for that. And in this specific Oxcal page you can access the program, read the online manual and get some calibration data and so on and so forth and also have access to previous versions of Oxcal. And you can also download the program um, or access the program via the online front end or download the program. You can do that but this requires that you install Node.js on your computer because this is a JavaScript software that runs on your computer inside of Node.js and if this sounds permish to you then probably this is not your way of using it so in that case you probably would use Oxcal rather online. It's possible there are some install instructions here but only if you have specific needs for having this run on your computer and probably some secure data that you don't would like to use at an online um, program and don't have the people at uh, Oxford see your data as long as you don't have these specific uh, probabilities and necessities then you can use the online version. Um, if you click here on Oxcal online or here in the right hand side of the page you get to this page here and you will be asked for a username and a password. Um, if you will use from now onward Oxcal on a regular basis, it makes probably sense to create a new user for yourself, writing the initials, your name and your email address, and then you will get an access a specific uh, user to access Oxcal here. But um, meanwhile, you can use a user that I have in, um, created for courses and the username is ERV student and you need a password for that and I will provide you with the password during the course for now I just paste it in here and now you have access to the Oxcal code page. Uh, there will be a warning here that uh, there is a new version of Oxcal available if you have used the previous version um, you can just safely click on OK and now you're on the main page of the Oxcal program or website or web application. And here you have access to the whole manual and to a lot of publications so everything is neat and scientific. You can access whatever has Ron Ramsey have written about this program and a small introduction to the software. But here on the left there's already waiting and um, nice interface in which you can enter the main things for um, to calibrate one C14 date and that's what we will do in this first uh, part here of the video. So I have here the publication to Pragmiskovice and from this publication I will use the C14 dates to get some calibration going on here and in other videos we will see how we can use uh, LibreOffice Calc to get more C14 dates in one go into the program. But for now we need some things here. We need a name, the actual date and a standard deviation. The name, most of the time it's most convenient to use the um, lab number as a name because this should be unique 
for every sample so we can have a unique identifier with that I start here with this first uh, date here Kia 35070 and in this table we see a lot of other informations like the uh, archaeological determination the dying age and sex of the buried individual and so on and so forth also more information about the specific um, content of datable material and the actual C14 um, yeah, content but what we're interested for the calibration is this BPH and the standard deviation that's what we also have to enter here into our program so the BPH is 3745 and the uh, standard deviation is 35 and with that we have all the necessary information there to start the calibration itself you can also select different calibration curves so there are um, different options here for the southern hemisphere for the northern hemisphere it's INCAL for the southern hemisphere is this one then uh, if you want to have something in recent times it's called BOMB after the atomic bombs and other options and most it's most advisable uh, to use the latest version of the calibration curve because this will give you the yeah the up to date um, results from this investigation of tree rings and with that the most secure C14 calibration that you can have here so in that case here it's in Cal 20 and now I can click on calibrate and when I do that I immediately get here the result of the calibration and um, we have here the basic plot what we can see is the information that we entered so the name and the BPH and the standard deviation and the probabilities for calendar uh, dates here and we have um, so our I will come to that later uh, we have here 95 percent probability which is a uh, two sigma probability and that's the standard how you can report or should report this probability and you get different areas here we are a bit wiggly part of the calibration curve so there are different uh, peaks here in the calibrated result on the left you can see the uncalibrated date like we have entered it with a center around 3745 and a standard deviation of 35 years for this uh, nice Gaussian um, uncalibrated result there's just a measurement error that we see with that and now if we confront that with the calibration curve we get this ugly shaped probability distribution and from here we can read that the, uh, the young the oldest age is 2283 and the youngest age is uh, 2034 and that's the calibration result in two sigma with 95 percent probability the actual date the actual c14 content of this um, of the sample calibrated falls within this range of dates so within this let's say 250 years there is a five percent chance that the actual date is outside of this range so we always have to make a compromise here okay let's look to different ways how we can format this output and at first for example we can also uh, visualize the one sigma range this one sigma range is smaller so we have now from 2200 to 2048 um, so it is a more crisp result but it, it's not necessarily a better result because now we have a, a smaller probability that our actual date is within this range and the probability is only 68% um, that means one out of three dates will be outside of this range while if we report a 95% probability only one in 20 dates will be outside of this range from a statistical point of view so it's always advisable to use the two sigma range that's the 95% you can also go crazy and use the 99% probability here and then the range will be even wider but standard is that you use the 95% probability 
There's more uh, here, more checkboxes. For example, posterior and indices. This doesn't make sense for our individual data. We will come to that later when we do more complicated calibration. You can also um, blend in summary statistics like the mean value of our calibrated curve and the standard deviation of this mean around this mean value for our calibrated distribution. But from a statistical point of view, since this is not a normal distribution, not a um, well-behaved distribution, a irregular one, it doesn't make sense to have these values here. So you should not use this um, mean and uh, the standard deviation for the calibrated result. There's another middle value, that's the median. Um, it's another point estimate. It also is not better, although the median is probably a generally a better statistic to be used here but still it's a point estimate and there is no reason why actually the date should be 2100 because it could be within the whole range of probabilities here so you can use that for display if you like but it doesn't make so much sense also if you don't like bc you can also change to bce and ce this will only change the uh, the text here nothing more um, you can also go to Gregorian calendar or CalBP. That probably makes sense if you have contact with a lot of uh, natural scientists and they usually talk about CalBP and not about uh, before and after Christ. So this might be relevant. You can also change the, the um, rounding of the result. So here it affects how well uh, or how precise the reporting of the probability range is also nothing more and you can also reverse this um, but this also doesn't make so much difference um, probably more interesting is to be able to um, style the plot for example if you have to print in black and white it probably makes sense to use this black and white option here and to have an effect you have to re uh, you have to click on apply changes and then you will see a black and white repre uh, representation of your calibration you can also use some brackets there and add a 3d effect but it doesn't change anything here so uh, for that it also doesn't matter. We probably will see something about that in um, the more complicated um, plot or complicated analysis. As I did before, you can also click into this image and drag it around. So that so you can see that the calibration curve moves and uh, also the sigma range here for the uncalibrated result. And with that, you can change what part or where the date is present or uh, shown <laughs> in which part of the uh, the plot here if you don't like the size here you can also zoom in and if you apply this change just the image becomes larger you can change the x-axis by dragging or by entering values here and apply the changes you can also change the, the y-axis if you like, if you want to have that a bit, uh, bit smaller or a bit bigger, you can change these values here by clicking around here. Okay, um, last thing, probably you can also use this plot option here in format and remove some informations like the title or the ranges. If you click on apply, they are gone or add some other informations uh, if they are available and um, most of these things only make sense if you have more complicated analysis than that okay so this is the basic plot that you get uh, your results from I will also give you a glimpse on the table there's also a table for calibrated results this doesn't make so much sense I mean it's more crisp uh, you have this the results in a tabulated way but for individual um, calibrations usually the plot is the option that you would like to to have and to represent your data 
how can you now export this plot and there is the possibility to save the file as and now you will be asked uh, where you want to save this file and in which format you can choose PDF or SVG as vector formats or PNG as a raster format these vector formats make or are actually the option that you should choose for publication if you just want to incorporate the result in a presentation it's probably the best to use the PNG option with that get a raster image but we choose now the PDF version you can change the name test PDF for example and if you click on save it will be only saved on the Oxcal server if you really want to have that on your computer you have to click on download and then the file is processed and now it's downloaded and if I click on that you will see here the resulting PDF and as a PDF I can zoom in and zoom out and it will not get pixelated which would be different in a P PNG version okay that's how you can simply calibrate an individual date and how we can do more complicated things and calibrate more dates on one go we will see in another video